Hey guys, what's up? It's Monklezunky. So for this video, I decided to do an Age of Empires video, Age of Empires 2 video. In fact, um, this has been pretty much the main game that I've been playing besides RS. Obviously, I've been playing RS quite a bit, but um, when I'm not playing RS, uh, I am playing this game for the most part and a little bit of Xbox, but not much. But anyway, this was a game I had about uh, two weeks ago. Um, me and a friend here we're going two versus two against another couple of guys online. This is on Steam, obviously. This is the uh, Age of Empires 2 HD um, re-release on Steam, and you can play it online on Steam, and I have been doing so, and it has been a ton of fun. But anyway, um, yeah, me and my friend here, Bregma, we decided to, um, yeah, we were going two versus two versus the blue guy, who is uh, Storm Sage, and the red guy, who is Serena. Um, this was a pretty good matchup because all these guys are fairly well about the same skill level. Um, me, Bregma, and Serena, the red guy. So I'll just call them by the cover color. So me, I'm the purple. Uh, yellow is Bregma. Red is Serena. So the red guy, the yellow guy, and me were all about the same skill level. And I think the blue guy was, he was pretty decent as well. Um, but he struggled a little bit in the early game, which can tend to happen when you haven't been playing too much. Um, but anyway, Age of Empires 2, I have been playing this game since the year 2000, which was now um, 13 years ago, almost 14 years ago. Uh, that's the first time I bought this game. And I've been playing it since then. And I, when I first got this game, I never really played it much online, uh, mostly because I didn't have internet <laughs> growing up. But um, yeah, I just played against the CPU a lot. But only recently, within the past couple of years, I've really discovered um, online play on this game. And I have been having a ton of fun with it. It's been an absolute blast. So anyway, I was playing as the Celts in this game. Um, the Celts are really, really good with siege units. And their uh, infantry foot soldiers are pretty decent as well. Uh, my ally here was playing as Mongols. The Mongols are very good with uh, their horse archers. They're very, very good. The best in the game, actually, at that. Um, the red player is playing as Mayans. And uh, that's kind of like a, an Aztec-ish civilization. Um, the bad thing about Mayans is they don't get any horses. So you can't make like knights or horse archers with the Mayans. I'm trying to be as basic as I can because I realize probably a lot of the people watching this uh, may not be too familiar with this game. Uh, of course, if you are kind of in your early 20s, around that age range, then you probably played this growing up because this game was huge 10 years ago or something like that. Was, this was like, everyone played this game pretty much. It seems like everyone I've talked to that's around my age does have memories of playing this as a kid. And finally, uh, the blue player, he's playing as Franks, which are really good at making knights. Uh, I believe they have the best knights in the game out of all the civilizations. Um, so obviously this is an RTS game. Uh, I'm failing here. I have a whole bunch of villagers that aren't doing anything. That's kind of a huge fail. But uh, anyway, I have been getting better at this all the time. I just played a game a little bit earlier. Um... Actually, I just finished a game before I started recording this, and I did really, really well in that. I was playing against people that were much, much higher ranked than me, and I did pretty well. I held my own against them. But anyway, um, yeah, since I haven't played a whole lot online, I will admit I've played maybe 30, 40 games total, which might be a bit, but I'm sure a lot of the people that, have going, that I've been going up against have played this game hundreds of times online. Um, so I definitely don't have the best uh, experience factor there. But anyway, um, yeah, at the moment, we're just kind of stuck in the Dark Age. Um, I kind of have to show this because it's part of the recorded game. But yeah, when you start in the Dark Age, uh, there's not really a whole lot you can do. You can make villagers, which gather all your resources. Um, they chop trees, build farms, harvest food, etc., etc. Um, and other than that, you can't really build any army in the Dark Age. You have to wait until you get into the, the further ages before you can really do that. Um, so the main thing that you want to do in the Dark Age is get a whole bunch of food uh, so you could advance to the next age as quickly as possible, um, which is what I'm doing here with these farms. That's how you gain food. Um, you, so yeah, that's what all the players are doing right now, just trying to um, age up to the next age, which is the feudal age, as quick as possible. No one's made it yet, and it's 11 minutes on the clock already, which is a bit weird. Usually people start hitting the feudal age around 10 minutes or so just as I said that red aged up and yellow aged up 
and uh, yeah, Blue aged up as well, and I was lagging behind a little bit because, um, again, I'm not the best starting out in this game. Still practicing a lot with that. But anyway, my basic strategy here was to just take out Blue as quickly as possible. Um, I wanted to get up to the Castle Age, which is the age after the Feudal Age. It goes Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, Imperial Age. So I wanted to get up to the Castle Age as absolutely fast as I could and make some knights and then attack the blue player and try to really take him out of the game, try to really destroy his economy so that he wouldn't be much of a threat. Um, and then we could just two versus one the red player. Uh, that was the general plan at least. It didn't go exactly as I hoped because uh, things rarely do. But here I'm just scouting out the blue player. I'm finding out where his wood is. Um, it's really good to attack your enemy's wood as soon as possible because uh, wood is far away from the town center. This The town center, you can garrison villagers inside the town center, and then they can't be attacked by your troops unless you destroy it, which is kind of hard to do. Um, at the early stage of the stages of the game, it's pretty hard to take down town centers. They pack quite a punch. Um, but as you can see, his wood camp over here is quite far away from his town center. Uh, so my plan was to harass this wood and try to kill as many villagers as possible so that would really slow down his economy. So um, at the moment what I'm doing here is just saving up for the castle age. So I'm building my two buildings here to, that I need to research to the castle age and I'm also gathering some gold so I can get up to the castle age as quickly as possible. Again I have some idle villagers standing around. Every time you have villagers standing around um, not doing anything that's really really a bad thing. And I kind of do want to look at um, red here a bit and yellow here a bit because obviously when I was playing the game I couldn't see what they were doing. I could only see what I was doing and what blue was doing because I was scouting him out a lot. Um, but red and yellow I really had no clue what they were doing. They are just kind of um, fighting amongst themselves I guess. So what red decided to do here was make some archers and he was going to attack yellow as soon as possible with those archers. And yellow decided to make some scout cavalry which is a really, really weak horseman unit, but it's the only one that you can make in the Feudal Age, and rush him. So he, he picked off one villager there. That's not very much. Um, that's kind of a waste if you decide to make a whole bunch of scouts and only kill one villager. That's not a good thing at all. Um, but that's all he managed to do, and I'm sure he'll probably come back with those scouts later and do a bit more harassing on Red and try to destroy his economy. But Red is walling up here. Um, he's trying to kind of block out the enemy. And here I forgot about this, but um, again this game did happen a couple weeks ago, but Blue decided to rush me with some scouts as well, and Blue made a ton of scouts, which um, can be a great thing if you kill off a lot of villagers, which he did. He killed off like four or five villagers there, so my economy was kind of hurting a little bit. Um, but it costs a ton of resources to make all those scouts, so if you um, end up not killing very many villagers with the scouts, they're kind of a huge waste. And what I decided to do to counter the scouts was to make some spearmen, because spearmen are really, really good at killing scouts. And I believe um, Blue actually went and attacked Yellow with the scouts after he saw that I had spearmen, because spearmen just destroy scouts. There's not a whole lot that scouts can do in it. Do about it. Um, but yeah, Yellow is now going up to the Castle Age, and I just got up to the Castle Age as well, which is good for me because I can start making some real powerful army now and really destroy uh, blue as best as I can. So over here, red is attacking yellow, um, trying to harass his economy a bit. Yellow built a tower here to try to defend his villagers a little bit. Um, but yeah, red is still picking off quite a few villagers there, and that really hurts to lose that many villagers. Uh, that really hurts your economy a lot and sets you way back. So. Red or uh, Yellow's attack with his scouts on Red didn't do a whole lot, but as you can see, Red's attack on Yellow here really, really hurt Yellow. Um, and he's probably going to take down this tower. I'm not sure. I can't quite remember. Again, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't want to spoil anything too much. So Yellow is coming back with his scouts. He's going to try to defend this a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm still planning on taking out Blue, and Blue has not walled out. Uh, walled up his base so I can easily get in there and attack him. So that should be pretty nice. But anyway, um, I just made some knights here, which are a really, really, really strong unit. And uh, Red said he needed help, so I decided to go over and help Red with my knights before I did any raiding on blue. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to pump out those knights as fast as I can because they're a really, really powerful unit. Um, and in the castle age, and in your, if your opponent's in the field age and you're in the castle age and you have knights, uh, there's not a whole lot they can do about it. They're just kind of screwed. But yeah, I come over with my knights and I pretty much mop up Red's archers very, very easily. Archers are very weak against knights. And yeah, no contest. All the archers are dead. We win that little engagement there. He almost lost his tower. He didn't quite. It was almost dead. But yeah, now I decide to um, yeah take my knights and go over and harass Blue a bit. Blue is coming back in with his scout cavalry. Um, he's looking to possibly kill off a few villagers, but I'm ready for him, and I have my spearmen, and bye-bye scouts. The scouts are going to die super fast to those spearmen. They don't put up much of a fight at all. Um, so yeah, he was trying to harass me a little bit with those scouts that he still had left over, but um, yeah, not much he can do there. And meanwhile, I come in with my knights uh, into Blue's base and try to kill off a few villagers here. Um, again, he didn't do a very good job of protecting his villagers because he could have easily walled up right here and right here and right here. He could have fully walled in his base quite easily, but he decided not to. Um, I don't know why, because he walled this entire side of his base, but he did not wall over here for some reason. So that just ended up with me killing a ton of his villagers and really hurting his economy a lot, which was great news for me. Um, I'm losing some farms here, but... Now, I believe I try to transition over into castles or something like that. I'm gathering some stone here with some villagers. Um, my reasoning for that is I want to put, put up a castle as soon as I can um, and really try and put some pressure on blue and really try to hurt his economy quite a bit. Um, so at the moment, if you've been keeping track of the scores down here, I'm in the lead of the scores. That means I'm doing pretty well at the moment. And uh, Yellow just said in the chat that he's going to start booming, which basically means making a humongous economy and uh, just trying to gain as many resources as possible, which leaves you very vulnerable because if you have a humongous economy but no army, you can be attacked and killed quite easily, but um, you also have so many resources that later on you can just build a gigantic army and just steamroll people. So I was doing a little bit of both because I had some knights out here and I believe I started, yeah, I started making a whole bunch of cavalry archers, uh, horse archers, whatever you want to call them. They're just archers on horseback. They're really, really good at killing villagers. I started making some of those. I'm not sure why because I was the Celts and Celts don't have any um, bonuses for their cavalry archers, but I decided to do that anyway. Again, can't extremely understand my reasoning. But anyway, Blue here, he still is not walled off. Um, he does have a castle now, so that's going to help defend a little bit, but I can still move some horse archers in right here and pick off his villagers gathering wood, uh, and they're going to die very, very quickly. Um, I thought he was going to wall up there, but yeah, he for some reason, he still does not want to wall up. I don't know why it would have helped him so much in this game. You'll see later on, it really, really would have uh, made his efforts way easier if he just walled off this little area right here, but he didn't. Um, anyway, yeah, I have some cavalry archers uh, coming out, and yeah, I'm going back in with my cavalry archers, going to try to harass his economy, going to try to kill some villagers off. We'll just take a quick look over at red and yellow. Red and yellow, at the moment, it's kind of boring. Red's all walled in. He's only going for economy. He's only gathering resources right now, so... Not too much um, exciting stuff to watch over here. And same with Yellow. Uh, he's pretty well walled in as well. Pretty protected. I guess not as much as I thought. But yeah, um, he's just going for an economy right now. He's just booming, making a ton of villagers. Not really worrying about anything else. But here's the exciting part. I come in with my cavalry archers and I uh, pick off a few villagers. And again, I can't get too close to that castle because those ca that castle will just slaughter my cavalry archers very easy. Um, I won't be able to do anything. But again, he did not wall off, so I could just run in here. I could kill a couple villagers and send them running, which is, yeah, again, as long as those, vill those villagers aren't gathering uh, and working and collecting resources, that really hurts your economy. So as you can see from the score here, um, blue is really set back. He's at 2,000 points. I'm at nearly 4,000, and red and yellow are about at 3,500 each. So blue is really, really lagging behind. Um, part of the reason for that is he has a idle villagers just standing around not doing anything. Uh, part of that is he only has one town center, so he can only create villagers from one town center. Um, 
And you really want to, as soon as you advance to the castle age, you want to build more town centers. Um, as you can see, I have one town center here, I have one here, and I thought I had a third one. Maybe I put up the third one later. But um, traditionally, you want to go out for three town centers and just make villagers from all of them. So here he finally walls up, but it's too late because I already have my army in his base. Um, he really should have walled up earlier. And yeah, now I can just pick off these villagers here. They can't stand up to knights and cavalry archers at all. And I should also be able to take down this wall pretty quickly because this is only a wooden wall. Um, Stone walls are obviously much, much stronger, but only a wooden wall here. And yeah, I sent a couple of cavalry archers to their deaths right now. Not really sure why I did that, but um, anyway, I do have a castle out now, so that means I can make the Celtic unique unit. No other civilization can make this. Only the Celts can make this, and this is a Woad Raider. I'm going to be making lots of these guys. Um, they're really, really fast, and they're pretty decent infantry guys, so... Here, Blue resigns because, again, I killed all of his gold-gathering villagers, and there just wasn't a lot he could do. I mean, if you just look at him, he has a few scouts and a knight out, and he has a whole bunch of unprotected villagers here, a whole bunch of villagers here. But yeah, he just has a tiny amount of villagers compared to me. His economy is very weak, and there just wasn't a lot that he could do. And I did lose my army there because I wasn't really paying attention. I think I was focusing on my economy. Um, so, yeah, red just took out my horses pretty easily. So that was bad. I shouldn't have done that. I should have avoided that. But anyway, this sage, I said I didn't expect him to resign so easily. But if you really look around, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot left. Um, he probably has maybe a third of the villagers that I do, which means he's only going to, maybe less than that, maybe like a fourth of the villagers I do. He probably only has 30 villagers maximum, which means his economy is just kind of going to suck a lot. Um... And yeah, he has no army at all, so he wouldn't have been much of a challenge to kill. So now it is a 2v1 between um, yellow and me attacking red. I really got to say it kind of is a shame if blue was a better player or if he had just walled off here and made um, a lot more villagers. He really would have done so much better. Like these three ones right here, they were just standing around for a long, long time not doing anything and that's kind of a fail, but yeah, if Blue had just walled off and if he had just created like twice as many villagers, he would have done much, much better for himself, but I guess that's just the way it is. So at the moment I'm making uh, Woad Raiders and I believe I also start making some Battering Rams in a little bit as well. And we're going to try to attack Red. Red is much, much better defended than um, Blue was. And he also has a better army. So he's going to be a bit more of a challenge. Yellow is putting up a castle here. And he's going to try to break through uh, the house here and raid Red's economy. And that's going to be pretty uh, pretty much a struggle to deal with if he does get in. But Red is walling up here. So he won't get in anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um... So red is pretty safe at the moment. He doesn't have much of an army. He has a few archers and a few pikemen here, and that's about it. I'm um, looking over at yellow. He's putting up another castle. I don't know why he's putting it there. That's not the best placement for it. Um, if he had like put a castle down here, or possibly, I don't know. Yeah, probably right here would probably be the best place for it because he would be able to like shoot the villagers over here and break through. Um, but he decided to put it there. But Red's army at the moment, I don't know how much of an army he has. Barely anything. He has a few Mangudai, which are the Mongols' unique unit. They're a really, really extremely powerful horse archer. The best horse, ar horse archer in the game. Um, and so he, he only has a few of those and not much else. But again, he has just been working on his economy a lot. Um, so as you can see, his economy is pretty huge and is really, really doing well. And I, on the other hand, uh, army-wise, I have quite a few um, Woad Raiders, and I don't really have anything else at the moment because, uh, again, my knights all died, my cavalry archers all died because I was stupid and let them die, but I have a lot of Woad Raiders, but I don't really need any army at the moment because I know Red isn't going to attack because if he attacks uh, either me or Yellow, then he could leave his base pretty much undefended. So it wouldn't. It's not smart to go out attacking other people when you're going two versus one against players that are similar skill level to you. 
But I am putting up some siege workshops at the moment, and I'm going to be making some battering rams. Um, and I decided to do that because, um, again, Celts are really, really good with their siege equipment. So they do very, very well against um, buildings like battering rams take out castles quite easily. Uh, they take out town centers quite easily. And obviously it's kind of hard to destroy castles and town centers with just regular troops, but battering rams destroy them very quickly. And I have a whole bunch of farms expiring here. So there is quite a bit of a stalemate here. I wish I could speed up the game more, but I can't, unfortunately. This is as fast as it goes, so I do apologize for that. So I'm going to try to keep this as entertaining as possible. Yellow is gathering a ton of stone. I don't know why. Um, if we can actually look at his resources. I haven't been doing this all game, but we can do that. Um, so he has a ton of stone. He has enough to build another castle, and he's going to have enough to build two castles pretty soon, um, gathering all this stone with his villagers. So he's going to be able to pump out these Mangudai very quickly. Obviously, um, your unique unit for every civilization is created from the castle. And as you can see here, if we click on these castles, he is just pumping out Mangudai. He is going to have tons and tons of them. And um, not very much really holds up against Mangudai. They kind of just steamroll people. Uh, they just destroy um, almost all units in the game. When, they're, when you have enough of them, there's just not a whole lot you can do. Uh, Red here, on the other hand, he's starting to wall up a little bit. Because he doesn't want me to, me or Yellow to just come in his base and wreck him. So finally, Yellow is putting down a castle here where I suggest he should have put it earlier. Uh, he's going to be able to break, break through this mining camp and just come right into Red's base. Um, and I don't quite know if Red can see this castle. No, he can. He can see this castle going up. Um, this is, what, for uh, just so you guys know, this is actually what uh, the Red player can see during the game. Um, so he can see all of his base obviously he hasn't really scouted my base he knows I have castle but other than that he doesn't really know what I'm doing um, and he hasn't scouted much of yellow either so he's going to have a hard time really knowing what's gonna come at him and then me on the other hand I this is I believe where I attack so I'm coming in with my world raiders and my siege rams and I'm gonna be making an attack against red here going to try to break through his wall I just discovered that he's all walled up here so I'm going to um, break through his wall and try and attack. And yellow here, he just has an absolute horde of Mangudai. And those are just going to destroy anything that goes up against them. These pikemen, they don't stand a chance. They're just going to get cut to pieces by those arrows. And even the archers here, again, they're just going to get cut to pieces by the Mangudai. Because um, he doesn't have any units that are good at killing them. But here, I break through uh, Red's wall, so it's kind of like a two-pronged attack. The Mangudai are attacking on one side, and my Wode Raiders are attacking on the other. And I have my battering rams here going in as well, and just looking to wreck shop. Um, there's not really a whole lot Red can do in this situation, because again, two versus one just isn't very fair. But that is all for that game. That was weird. It kind of like restarted the game there, but yeah, that's all. Um me and yellow ended up winning that game so that was kind of an interesting i know it wasn't the closest game in the world because blue uh struggled a bit but besides that it was pretty fun to play and again this is just kind of my first game play of age of empires that i'm putting up on this channel so if you enjoyed it um let me know if you'd rather not see any more age of empires in the future that's going to make me very sad but again you can let me know that as well and um, i do have quite a few more recorded games and i would be extremely happy actually to um, commentate some of them and put them up if anyone would be interested in seeing that but if not that's fine that's about all for this video thanks for watching and farewell